Okay, so we got a letter. What do we call a letter in math? Joe? Variable. Everyone say variable. Variable. Oh, that was table E and D. I didn't have table A. Everyone say variable. Variable. Okay, so we have a variable. We have a plus sign. So a calm down center to me is a safe place in the classroom. So it can also be called a safe zone. And I started putting it into my classroom over the past few years when I noticed that students have a hard time dealing with their emotions in the actual classroom. So I felt like they needed a space in the room where they can go and regulate their own emotions and you know, manage them. Students use the Calm Down Center of an average maybe once a day. And sometimes kids, it could be once a week or even once a month. It depends on the student. Um, some of our students who have more emotional needs might use it once a day versus a student who, you know, maybe just needs a check-in every once a month. It's important to make sure when you're using Calm Down Center that you teach the procedure because you don't want it to become an interruption in the classroom. So they go in their basket, they pull out what's called a brain break card, and when they pull it out, they can sit on their desk and they raise their hand and they let the teacher know, hey, I need to go take a break. When I visually see that card on their desk, I just signal to them to go ahead and go. And then they know the steps to go sign in, set the timer. But that was all taught through a procedure which we spent a whole class period um, just going over and having kids actually practice it. Okay, I wanna see if we mastered how to go to the Calm Down Center. So I'm gonna call on someone and we're gonna practice every part of the steps. Just to remind us, who can tell me what's our first step? Brianna? Um, take out your brain break card. Take out your brain break card. Step two, who can tell me step two? Albert? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. After I've given you permission, what would be the next step? Tyler? Sign in. Sign in. Next step? Turn on the timer. Turn on the timer. Okay, so you guys ready for this? I'm gonna see. Albert. So Albert, I want you to model for us the correct way for how we go to the Calm Down Center and what we do once we get there. Everyone should be watching Albert, giving him our attention. Go ahead. So after the students have set the timer and they're ready to engage in one of the activities back at the Calm Down Center, they can choose. We have kinetic sand, I have drawing activities, I have breathing technique cards, I have like Orbeez, Legos, different kind of sensory activities for them to do. And they all decided on these. We voted as a class, what are some things that you want um, back there to help calm you? So I use the Calm Down Center to help me be a little bit more proactive and notice students' emotions and how they're feeling before it grows and then you get reactive. So for my students, a lot of the time, um, they're going through some home life issues, so they bring that with them to school. And so in the morning, I actually get a great deal of the students who actually want to use the Calm Down Center. And for me, I have to um, step back and make sure I'm not taking it personal and be very proactive in a way that I'm allowing them to go to the Calm Down Center, make a choice, I call it a better choice, and regulate their emotions. I use the Calm Down Center in a special education classroom, but I think every general education teacher should have some area in their room that resembles a Calm Down Center. It doesn't necessarily have to have all of the items that I have in my Calm Down Center, but maybe you could just have a desk and maybe like a beanbag chair or something um, for them to use so that they can go to regulate their emotions. Some of the problems I've had over time with the Calm Down Center when I first started initiating it was having it run smoothly. So it became a distraction at some points where I had it located in a different area in the classroom and I was like, okay, I noticed a lot of the kids are looking in that area, they're not focused on me during instruction. So that made me realize, hey, I need to put it to the back of the room where everyone's back is to that person and they're not giving them eye contact. And then also just choosing some of the items wisely. We try not to choose too loud of items um, so that it's not distracting the other kids and just making sure we have options for everyone because maybe a kid wants to go to the Calm Down Center but they don't like Play-Doh or they don't like sand. So what do I have out um, back there for them? So it's important to find um, student interests and needs when you're building it. This is a slide run, so you're gonna skip this one right now. You're gonna pick up with this. I think it helps keep the kids within the classroom. So I don't really have a lot of kids who are trying to escape the room. And sometimes you'll get those kids where I need to go get some water, I need to go to the nurse, I need to go to the bathroom. and. Honestly, I've cut back on a lot of the kids missing instruction due to this. 
And I've also have kept a lot of my kids focused because if I'm not dealing with it and allowing them to control their emotions, then they're going to be at their desk causing a distraction. They're also going to be at their desk maybe just shutting down and it's going to make it become a bigger problem. So having this and taking out those five to 10 minutes that I give them from instruction pays off in the long run. It's literally taking away from them having a meltdown in the classroom and causing you know, the behavior management to fall apart.